Welcome to another episode of Manny Talk Shooting, the show where I talk to individuals all across the shooting industry. We talk competition, self-defense, concealed carry. If you enjoy this content, please check out our YouTube channel, Manny Things. Without further ado, in, without further ado, let me introduce you to our guest tonight. I'm sitting down with Mr. Eric Olson of 508 Holsters. Eric, how are you doing today, sir? Good, Alex. How are you? I am fantastic. It's a wonderful Sunday evening. It's actually decent weather today, so it's all good. <laughs> yeah, same here. Same here. No more heat wave. Finally, finally good. For now. Yesterday. For now, you know. <laughs> I'm ready for some fall weather. Same here. Except that means the shooting has to slow down or stop. So yeah, I know, I know. I did shoot a a match in uh, November. God, it was November seventh last year. It was seventy five degrees. It was beautiful, beautiful day. I wish that was the case over here. It's yeah, usually not. But after that, it goes south, and then there's you know, you, and it's five months of waiting to to get outside again. So mm-hmm. it just means more lots of dry fire, no live fire. Oh my God. I, I did so much dry fire this year and not, I, I learned a lesson this year. Dry fire is good. And I did a ton of it, but if you don't go to the range for five months also and never fire a full live round, like I came in primed. I'm like, I am ready. This is going to be. And it was like, Oh my God, you know, the gun's going off. I'm like, this is, I text Mason lane. I'm like, Mason, I think dry fire has messed me up. He's like, yeah, it'll do that if you don't, you know, don't get out and actually uh, do some do some lives. So this year, I'm gonna make sure every couple of weeks, even if it's 50 rounds or something, even if I have to go indoors, which I hate shooting indoors, I'll go do some doubles. Be like, okay, that's what it feels like, and get back. Mm-hmm. Exactly. My so. first match this year was rough too. Doing that, I was like, wait, guns recoil? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I was like, I'm going to kill it. This is going to be great. You know, but the class fire, I'm like, I'm going to hundo this. Oh my God. It was just like, <laughs> it was, it was not what I expected. We are now. It took a little bit, but it, it, you know, get, get back, get back in the group. Absolutely. Well, Eric, we actually met through a mutual friend of ours, uh, Mr. Jason Hitchings of Adept Defense. Yes, he uh, pointed my way towards you. And we also have another mutual uh, acquaintance friend, uh, Mr. Mason Lane. Yep. Uh, Mason's a good dude, too. He was on the show. If anyone's interested and you haven't listened to it, go back and listen to the episode with Mason. Uh, it was a phenomenal uh, conversation we had. Yeah, it is. It's I don't I don't miss a Mason podcast. It, wait, till you, wait till you get to train. If you get to train with him, it's I'll tell you, man. Long as ammo is come coming back in 2022, we'll have a, I think we've talked to a couple of my local buddies about getting a Ma- Mason to come to Michigan some point in the season. You will, well, you will not be disappointed. That is true. I am fortunate enough to take an hour drive and train with him. So, lucky you, Mister yeah. Hour Drive. Yeah, <laughs> an hour drive up north. Three, you know, get a good three-hour session in with him by yourself. It's it's uh it's pretty cool. I bet He's, it is. What a, just a wise beyond his years. I'm mm-hmm. twice his age, and. <laughs> And he, it's like, each me. <laughs> mm-hmm. he, yeah, he, he's, he's something else. He's gonna, he's, he's gonna win a lot more titles, in my opinion. Oh, absolutely. Yes, he is. He's gonna go and, uh, if Area Seven's like anything, he'll give uh, Max a run for his money. Uh, come I, nationals. I hope so. I hope so. That's the plan. I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Well, Eric, I know a little bit about you, but my guests probably don't. So, who are you, and how did you get into shooting, sir? Let's see. Well, I mean, I grew up, you know, kind of country in the, in this, in the country. So my dad was a hunter. Um, so I kind of grew up, you know, I, I started hunting when I was very young, you know, probably nine, 10, I think. So we shot, you know, we used to be able to shoot clay pigeons in the backyard, you know, through, we'd have the clay pigeon thrower and shoot shotguns. So I always liked guns, but then I uh, kind of, after high school, I moved to the city and uh, actually I worked in the bicycle industry for 30 years. <laughs> so guns kind of went away. I just, it just wasn't something I was, I, I was thinking about. And then um, a friend of mine was like, oh, I'm going shooting tomorrow. I'm like, oh, I want to go. I want to go. I haven't gone in so long. And uh, 
at that point, I'd never shot a handgun. Uh, you know, I just had just been rifles and um, and shotguns and stuff. So we went, and uh, I went, oh man, this is this is fun. And I did, you know, I did all right. And I'm like, well, I should probably get my LTC. <laughs> I didn't, have, you know, I didn't have, I didn't have any. I didn't have FID, LTC. So I got my LTC, and um, that in Massachusetts was an ordeal in itself. It took six months. Um, and by this time I was like, when I get into something, I'm into it. And so I, I bought a, uh, a Glock 17, uh, airsoft whole straight. So for six months, I was already like, you know, watching YouTube and going, all right, this is, this is what I'm going to do. And is, this is probably around 2012, I think 2012. Yeah. So, um, I didn't want to, you know, I, I kept going shooting, shooting with some friends and, you know, was standing there shooting static and I'm like, I don't want to do this. So I started searching out, well, what can I do? What can I do? And at that time there was really, there was no USPSA really in the area, but there was a ton of IDPA at that time was huge everywhere. So that's, I looked up any kind of competition shooting. That was what was coming up, you know, Bob Vogel, you know, so I started shooting IDPA like instantly. I got my license and I think a week later I shot my first match. So I just dive right into it. And um, around the same, so around the same time, I, like I said, I was working in the bicycle industry. It's just, I, I grew up racing bi uh, bicycles, um, all sorts of stuff. If it was two wheels, I did it. And um, when I became a gun owner, I don't know, you know, your, your things, <laughs> your, your views change a little bit. And uh, I was just like, you know, I, I just was doing the same thing for so long. And I said, I'm going to make holsters. You know, I never made a holster in my life. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I was watching some Filster videos uh, on YouTube and I'm like, I can do that. I literally walked into my boss's office and said, um, I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna give you two months and I'm done. And he was like, What? And I'm like, Yeah, I'm I'm gonna and uh yeah, I started my own business and nine years later, here we are. <laughs> mm -hmm. Still still going, you know, going strong. And um yeah, so that's kind of the the, the the short and long of it right there how how i got into guns and how i got into holes you know by getting into guns it gave me a business um and yeah now my whole life revolves around you know firearms so it's pretty cool that is pretty cool and honestly it's pretty awesome i mean now did you see like a gap in the market or did you think you could do something better while making holsters or i yeah so the gap the gap was you know three month lead times <laughs> and I, and I, and I'm impatient. If I want, you know what I mean? If I want something, I want it now. So mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm, you know, and after doing some research, I'm like, this isn't that hard. You know, little that I know, should I have quit my job with a mortgage and all that, <laughs> you know, to start, start a business on something I've never done before. Uh, yeah, yeah. I guess fear, fear is a good motivator. And I had to succeed, you know, I had to succeed. So I found a way to, to do it. And uh, over the years, it's grown into, you know, it's amazing. I get, I make my own hours, work, you know, work hard. We have, we have a lot of dealers. Um, the website does well. Um, I enjoy it. I, I enjoy, I, I could never go back to working for somebody else unless mm -hmm. it'd have to be the coolest gun. Really. If I could get, if it was working for somebody else and shooting all day, I could do that. <laughs> so, so the SIG Academy calls tomorrow. Are you quitting? Yeah. Uh, are you quitting yeah, 508? I'm, I'm done. I'm done. I'm moving to New Hampshire, which we want to do anyway. Uh, but yes, yes, I'd be out of here in a second too. Uh, so, just... so if you moved to New Hampshire, would you change the business name? <laughs> you know, I thought about that because we thought, you know, I'm like Carolinas. We're going to move, you know, just a free Massachusetts is a tough state, you know, it could be a... Mm -hmm. I, no, I don't think I would at this point, you know, eight, you know, not almost going on nine years. It's probably, it would probably keep it, mm -hmm. it, you know, the names out there, not everybody knows it, but enough people do, you know? 
Well, that's what you need. You just need your loyal customer base and enough people to tell enough other people about it to keep bringing in new business, right? Right, exactly. So, oh, shoot, where's the next one? There we go. But yeah, I mean, I like holsters. I, I have the, I'm assuming you do too, a box of shame before you had your own holsters, you know? I- Oh. Or you have like like this one doesn't work. This one's broken, and I've got I've got a box of those. The, the while I was waiting for my for my LTC, my first, you know, I'm like I'm gonna shoot, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna shoot IDPA. I need holster. Ordered me a serper <laughs> holster. <laughs> like, never used it. Then ended up watching videos of like don't use this holster. The guy should you know like mm-hmm. you don't know what you don't know at that time. So yes, I I ended up with a, a quite a few. A, a big old box yes of, of crap well and a lot of people don't know when they first get into carry and whatnot is that well they can find it at walmart which is super helpful right it's like mm-hmm. oh this fits my gun so why not yeah and but what they like like you said what they don't know is what they don't know but uh eric um besides mr mason lane have you taken any other formal training i have not no Ma- mason's the only person that i've i've uh take you know take an actual classes with um i'm fortunate enough we have a lot of really good shooters up here um it's such a condensed area you know it's not spread out like some parts of the country like Mm -hmm. you know we have you have five states six you know that were are within an an hour that people so Mm -hmm. our local matches get people from everywhere so um, you know, we'll have 10 to 10 to 15 M's in a, in a, in a, you know, two or three grandmasters at our locals. So it's, you know, it, you know, I see, I see other guys posting stuff. Oh, won the overall and carry optics today. I'm like, yeah, well come to our match. You got, you got six, you got two open grandmasters and, and, and five, you know, five or six master open shooters, you know, <laughs> like when I squeak a sixth or a seventh overall out, I'm like, heck, oh yeah, that was a good day, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, so it's, um, gotcha. but, and, uh, but other than that, I, there's people I've wanted to, mm-hmm. I, I, there was an Anderson course uh in mass a few i've got a few weeks ago mm-hmm. um probably about an hour or two west of here and i wanted to take that i just didn't have to, just finding the time you know um i want to take a mental management with him um i need it <laughs> <laughs> i need it for sure um but yeah ben ben stegger is definitely top of the you know i definitely want to train with him um, but yeah, I'm like I said, I'm fortunate to have Mason, and you really, you really have one of the best shooters in the world that you just uh, at the, your disposal to to be able to you know ask questions. I J, J. Beal mm-hmm. is you know I, I'll talk to Jay uh, if I have a, you know if I'm running into an issue, and he he's he's oh, what a, what a super nice guy, and he'll just be like, oh yeah, I know. No. I'll give you a phone call. I got you. If I get like 10 minutes, I, you know, I get, and then I get to tend the goats, but hold on, you know, <laughs> it, we'll get a quick phone call in and it'll help me through whatever I'm going through or so. So yeah. Um, but yeah. 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 I will agree. JB is an awesome That's dude too. It. He, uh, I don't know how he ha- makes time in the day for everything that he does. It's quite insane. In my opinion. He is. He is he's a, he's a machine. I wish I was 25 again or whatever. He is. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep that's kid number two on the way <laughs> i know i got to he, we, we shot in the same squad at area seven um so that was cool i bet that was cool yeah kind of jealous yeah that was good yeah hey, man his brother also oh yeah nick nick's us nick is us um he can sling some lead too yep that's a great shooter yeah now um eric what is your uh edc gun it is <laughs> it's clear mm-hmm. i kept it i kept it here just so uh p320 compact uh pro slide you can the light is just awful in here Let me oh there you, there you go there you go yeah so uh with the romeo pro i just got in today this 
came in today. Uh, so it's a, it's actually the full size module that was chopped and stippled. I don't know if you can, by mm -hmm. Steady, I'll give him a little shout out, Steady Grind Design. Uh, he's down in Rhode Island. He does for SIG stuff. He does really super amazing work, very cl super clean borders and just, uh, yeah, I figure it keeps it consistent because the only gun I really shoot, even though I have a ton owning the, the holster company is um, is my Legion for competency. You know, it's the gun I handle every day. Mm -hmm. So why not have the exact same grip close to the same dot? You know, it's a smaller dot because I use the, uh, the Max 3. Mm -hmm. So uh, on my on my comp competition guns so you know everything's the same point at point you know natural point of aim it's uh just keep it consistent i carried a glock for a long time um for reasons of our state uh you can't you know you are limited to 10 round mags mm -hmm. here um but there is uh, with Glocks, you can have pre-ban pre before they pass the uh, assault weapons ban way back in whatever, 92, 4, whatever that was. So if it's predated, you can have, so you can, you know, have a 15 round mag. It, it's ridiculous, it really. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but for that reason, I could have some capacity, but I just wanted to keep it consistent. And if I can't do it with 11, then, well, I don't know, you know. <laughs> <laughs> that is true and you you like your legion i'm assuming i love it you know i i i started shooting these mason was the first person that uh had his hands on one uh, a p320 that way back like probably 16 or 15 mm -hmm. and i jumped on it then i just i was I was actually at one of my dealers dropping off uh, an order of holsters, a local dealer, and I'm, and they had one. I said, oh, you know, it was just the P320 full size. And I'm like, oh, can I, can I, you know, check that out? And I grabbed it and pointed it and went, oh my God, I was shooting a Glock 34 for the first four years of competition. Mm -hmm. I had smaller hands and just, I was like, oh my God, this is so comfortable. I don't have to, you know, and my arms all I can just relax and um I literally ordered some Dawson sights for it threw them on on a I, I bought the gun on a Wednesday threw the sights on on a Friday and shot a match on Saturday one <laughs> <laughs> and I said yep this gun's for me um and absolutely love it I did uh I tried CZs two years ago and I just couldn't the safe I was well, again I was at this point I was still shooting IDPA so uh shooting ESP division and I had to use the safety and that just the safety on a CZ it's not like a 2011 for me mm -hmm. like 2011 I have no problem popping off that thing was just a nightmare for me and I went right back to the 320 and then the Legion uh, the X5 came out and switched to that and I also I've I almost, I tried it again. I was going to go shadow two this year and try it out of buddies, you know, and I'm like, this is going to take, I'm going to have to work for three months to get to where I am now, mm -hmm. just with that gun. I'm, you know, I'm like, no, nah, this is silly. Just, you know, sometimes you look for a change thinking it's going to make a difference and it's, it's really not. <laughs> Absolutely. And honestly, those CZs have like the smallest like they're almost like a single stack magwell to be honest with you right it's yeah. like you, you got to get it in there perfect or it's either going over the side or you're throwing it at somebody it's 100 yep. <laughs> percent. and i know people who love them i mean i personally am not a legion fan i have not felt a legion trigger that i've liked even though i've messed with a couple gray guns guns and yeah but everyone's their own so i it's, it's just not my cup of tea yeah, you're shooting what, 30, 34? No, I'm shooting a 17. 17, 17, just MOS. It. Um, what, I have a MOS model and I have a just a regular 17 that I had milled. Milled, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I had, this is actually, so this is my competition gun. My, um, and I had, it's a Legion. God, man, the light is just awful in here. So 
So the Legion, you know, they make their top of the line sight doesn't go on their top of the line gun. Well, it does now that they have the Max. So I actually have this one milled mm-hmm. to have, so it sits down where it would, would uh, normally. Um, but yeah. Yeah, um, I was going to say, God, I had something. <laughs> yeah, no, oh, the, the trigger. You said you don't like the triggers. Mm-hmm. I, that's a, that's one thing with me. I'm not a trigger guy. Mm-hmm. Does like, I, I mean, there's certain, you know, to an extent, but like, I've, I've only shot, ever shot the stock triggers in these. And I'm like, whatever. I'm no split master, but if I get happy, I get 16s and 17s, you know. I'm not one of those 14, 13 guys. <laughs> I'll, I'll there, you know, I'll never be, but um, yeah. So trigger's not that important for me. Um, just overall comfort, I think. I'll yeah. I just, I've, I kind of agree with you. I was shooting stock Glock triggers for a while mm-hmm. in competition until I finally put this Timney in my 17. Yeah. So that'll, uh, that'll make a difference. Oh yeah. Uh, well, especially when you pick up your carry, like, I don't dry fire with my carry gun enough anymore. Yeah. I, I dry fired with it. I'm like, this is six pounds. This has <laughs> got to be like 30. It's, I think I, I think I wear my triggers in so much that I am, I am put a scale on it, but it's not, it's, it's not much at all. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would say it's under, it's under three, you know, and that, that for me is, is fine. Although now, uh, this year, come winter, I'm going, I, the plan is to switch to open next year. Oh, okay. Um, so now I'll be dealing with a pound and a half trigger or so. Now, what kind of open gun are you going to be shooting? I'm going to get an Atlas. You, you're going to get that, uh, 2.0 or you're going to buy everyone's, uh, no, a I'm V1s. Gonna, I'm going to get a 2.0. I don't know if I, I was lucky enough to try them out uh a few weeks ago uh so i shot the two i, I don't know if i am supposed to be talking <laughs> if i but anyway they, they had them up at area seven let's say and anyway they're pretty sweet but i i, I got to shoot a friend of mine's uh regular his chaos mm-hmm. um and i was like oh my god you guys are you cheat this is cheating mm-hmm. it's absolutely insane what, what you can I mean, the thing is, everyone else shooting them can do the same thing, but it's uh, it's fun to do. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? There's just something about an open gun that makes you want to giggle. Oh my god! I was just, I literally, my first few shots were we were shooting an array, and I'm like, oh, let me try, you know, and on the move, you know, two alpha pitchfork with 16 splits on a partial with the like you know that much a zone showing mm-hmm. I'm like look that's not fair the dot doesn't move the dot just stays right there that, that's the helpfulness of a frame mounted dot yes yeah such an advantage so so looking forward to do that for uh to do that new challenge you know but i wouldn't i won't switch to the winter and you know with mo- give me months of i'm dry fire and I gotta have my reloading situation squared too. So, yeah. Do you currently reload, or you shoot factory ammo? Um, right now, I'm shooting factory, but like Atlanta Arms or Syntec, you know, the Federal stuff, mm-hmm. the uh, 150, um, which shoots real nice. And I don't have, you know, that my my Legion will eat anything. So, but yeah, yeah, you know, one one twenty nine and thirty power factor. Mm-hmm. Stuff. Um, yeah, so that's been fun trying to find ammo all year, but I have been stocking up on primers, even though I'm not reloading. Oh, that's what that's what you got to do. I mean, buy them as you find them because you'll need them. You can yep. pay you could pay Mason and primers though. I know, <laughs> I know. I'm trying to, I'm trying to save so I can get up there more with them. If 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 thing things be all things being you know equal, if it was two years ago, I literally would have been up there at least once a month with them, you know, and I've only got to go up there at a little ref- refresher, like the week before area seven with them. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, if I could get up there, you know, every couple of weeks, I would, I would. 
Yeah, especially when you have that asset so close. Exactly. So you said you're switching to open. Um, what? And you said you shot IDPA. What division were you shooting in IDPA? Oh, well, through the years, I shot them all. But I was mo- – till at the end, I was shooting carry optics. Okay. And I wanted to – like, I kept wanting to switch – USPSA. I would shoot one, two matches a year, you know, and just be like, ah, and be lost, you know, be like, oh my God, I, I was lost. I was lost. I was, but I showed up at a, I showed up at a local match. I didn't know it was a, it was a six stage classifier. Mm-hmm. I was not classified. Were you at least a member of the USPSA? I was going in, right? Okay. So I, 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 I just got, this was the first year. I think this was 2018. And I, I, I'm like, I'm going to get a membership. I'm going to shoot USPSA this year. That's, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to split. I'll, I, so I went to this match and I'm like, oh, was, I didn't know it was a classifier match. And uh, I ended up making master. So, <laughs> so I was like, well, all right. I, I might have some, you know, I can at least stand and shoot stuff. Um, but it, this is, last year was supposed to be, that's it. I'm done. I'm done shooting IDPA. And it's, you know, I'm going to full on USPSA. And well, we know what happened last year. Um, I ended up shooting three USPSA matches last year. And that's just, it just you know, things didn't happen for six months. Mm-hmm. And then trying, you know, the matches were so small, you know, because they were limiting numbers. And so I got in a few and really started finding a flow right at the end and, you know, kind of won the last two in carry optics and was feeling good. And then I just, I said, that's it. I can't, I'm not, I, I was just, I was fed up with IDPA. I was really, you know, I was, I shot at it. I, you know, I did really well at majors and it's just, it's a different, for who I am, I want to compete against people are, you're literally competing against five people when you go to a, you know, mm-hmm. even a bigger match, you know, it's not where you go to an area match for USPSA and, you know, 50, the top 50% of the people are, are training it daily, you know, so it's not, I literally before, before this, this year, dry fire for me was maybe two three four times a year i didn't i like and i barely shot i would just show up in the matches i'd win and i'd go home i'm like yeah whatever you know there was no incentive to really train for me mm-hmm. so it was like oh it's easy until i started shooting USPSA and realized well i can't just go up here and win um so now i'll never look back i can't i i, I can't i my only regret is that uh, I switched five years ago <laughs> and, and stopped, but I mean, it did, don't get me wrong. It, it taught me how to shoot, you know, well, um, but you, you know, as you know, USPSA is a different animal. Absolutely. It is. And it's, it's honestly, it's, it's quite crazy how different the two sports are, even though we're both, they're both practical shooting sports or absolutely completely different yeah. monsters. Absolutely. I, I will say I, I, last year because matches were so few and far between we had some really good you know some g's and, and m's come to some to our local idpa and i would spank them mm-hmm. and i like it wouldn't even be close you know 20 20 seconds you know i would win by mm-hmm. <laughs> you know but I, it's a different game and mm-hmm. you've got to know how to play it and I'd been doing it, you know, it, it was just like me going there, you know, it was, it was the same. I, there's a learning curve, no matter what, mm-hmm. unless you're Mason, then you show up at the, you know, mass States and shoot four points down in IDPA and, and crush everybody's soul. And there's not even, mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, but yeah, like you said, two, two different things. Absolutely. Now, what kind of drives you, you know, what drives your shooting? Like what motivates you to try go and practice and train and. I just, uh, my competitive nature, like there's literally no, 
hobby I've ever got into that I didn't go, okay, how do I compete? Mm -hmm. It's just no matter what, no matter what it is, if there's a way to compete, I want to do it. And I don't, you know, not being good isn't an option. (laughs) So, Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so that, that, you know, and I, I mean, I love, I love the sport. I love the people. Um, and just, you know, I don't know, searching the quest for, for, you know, shaving off a, a you know, a tenth of here, or a, this, I don't know. It's a, it's cool. It's never ending, no matter what, no matter, you know, I don't know about you, but I never walk away from a match going, you know, that, Oh, that's the perfect match. I, everything went perfect and I couldn't have done anything better. And none of us do. No, right? not, even, not even the national champions can say no. that. Oh, and, uh, the, they'll, they'll be the worst. They'll nitpick their whole match and be like, well, no. I lost a two tenths here, a tenth here, yep. uh, you know, half a second here. Yeah. But they I'll, beat everybody by four seconds or something right. like that. It's not enough. It's, 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 it's never enough. It's right. And so it's what, what drives you. I mean, I'll have a good match and watch my videos and be like, I'll say to my girlfriend, I'm like, I'm not even posting these. I don't like how I moved out of this or this, this, you know, I feel like I was slow there. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, so critical of, you know, I'm like, ah, whatever. But, you know, it's, I do listen to Steve to Anderson's podcast makes me go, listen, you gotta, you gotta say, well, you know, take the good, take the, vic- you know, take your victories and take your, you know, and, and be positive about things. So. I see. Yeah. And I agree, but, but you also, the one thing I think Steve doesn't understand is you gotta, I mean, he probably is right. You do have to look at the negatives, but you gotta look at them in like in a productive standpoint instead of just beating the crap out of yourself. And a lot of people can't look at the, the, their mistakes and move on from them. They too much dwell on them. Right. And as soon as you take them kind of as like a constructive criticism or, uh, you know, it, at that point then it makes it a little bit easier to look at you're like you know i messed up this i was out of position here you know my body was leaning too much so it might have been a dumpster fire but it really wasn't it was just right it, well you know how things go in your mind especially during us as the stage is happening you know it's like oh my god it, you feel like you lost you know four seconds in one position and then you then you watch it on video and go oh well that was nearly as bad <laughs> yeah and then how the rate uh, the, the 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 stage goes it's like this felt like it took forever and yeah i'm still here <laughs> yeah and uh eric what are um, what are your goals is your goals just gm or to, to be regionally competitive yeah yeah those it was funny because uh when i went up and saw mason he kind of asked me that and i said you know what I've been meaning to write that down all year and I don't, you know, when we talked and I said, you know, I'm the state, you know, where I'm at in life, I would, I feel like I can make GM. I would, and yeah, and be regionally, you know, I, I'm not going to tell myself you're going to be world champ. You're going to, you know, (laughs) it's, uh, I want to shoot the best I can while i while i still can i i mean i just turned 50 this year so it, and i have i don't feel like i've slowed down any i've always you know as all i've always been active and stuff so but i know i don't get a lot of you know i don't get a lot of years of, of flying around chasing you know jay J around and, and mason you know what i mean like mm-hmm. like i like I, I keep things in perspective you know what i mean it's like you know, on a, on a, on a stage or can I hang? Yeah. Am I gonna, you know, am I going to go to nationals and be top 16? Uh, probably not. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It, it, I, I just want, yeah. I, you know, I want to be able to be a respected shooter where, where people, you know, go, oh, yeah, he's a good shooter. You know, mm-hmm. um, you know, I know I'm never, I'm not, not looking to make a living out of it. Who is, I don't think, you know, I don't think too many people are. Um, I just love to do it. It's, it's, 
you know, some people like to go golf on the weekend. I like to be in a dirt pit shooting, you know, cardboard targets. Mm-hmm. You mean you like pasting and resetting targets? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I have my my pastry gun, you know. Mm-hmm. And girlfriend. Yeah, and my girlfriend. She, wait, who shoots with me every single weekend? And it's pretty, it's pretty, that's, you know, I've never had that and it's awesome. So, you know, every weekend, you know, it's not like I'm fighting for time to get to the range because, well, we're going to the range together and, mm-hmm. you know, she shoots all the matches with me. And That is pretty cool. Yeah. Especially when you can just send your paster gun with her so she can have two and just do two <laughs> targets at once. I'm like, I'll just sit back here. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So, yeah. So goal, you know, GM is a goal for sure. I just want to see that G on the, on the, on the, on the card. That'll make me happy. Um, you know, a real good finish at an area match, you know, would be awesome. Uh, you know, even, and, and to me, that's a, you know, top eight in, you know, carry optics, you know, depend, cause you got the, you get a lot of heat at, at a match yeah, at, at area matches. So, mm-hmm you know, or, or a certain percentage, you know, to the, to the, to the Masons and the Phil Straters that I get to shoot against, you know, locally or, you know, or so, yeah, yeah, it's just, so no, no super grand, you know, go on, you know, I'm just be the best shooter I can. Awesome. I, I, I mean, I think that's what we all strive for. We're not, and I think most of us understand we're not the Mason Lanes, the Phil Straters, the Max Michelles of the world. We're right, you know, we're just there to have fun and do the best we can. Now, if you had, and now if I was twenty five and it, you were asking me this, mm-hmm. my answer would probably be much different. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It would be, it would be. I want, yeah, I'm going to be, you know, national chair, or but, you know, I, I have to stay realistic and, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's all. That's, yeah, I love putting yeah. in the work though, I, and I love, and it's great to see. You know, when you see those improvements, mm-hmm. it's like, bam, you know, that 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 alone is worth, you know, worth putting the time. Right, it definitely uh, validates all the effort and the hard work when you can see it and be like, especially if you, like, example, you shoot a classifier match once a year, right, and they have like the, pretty much the same ones. And you can compare El Prez from last year to El Prez from to this year. Yep. You know what's good for that is Steel Challenge. Mm-hmm. I really this year, end of last year and this year, I use it as a uh, you know I keep telling myself I use it as a practice uh, you know because it, it teaches you know it teaches you visual patience. You know, miss it. You start missing steel uh, at a st- in steel challenge, and you know you're done. You're not gonna. So I've steadily moved up, and uh, now now goal is to make grandmaster. And that um, we shot yesterday. We shot shot steel challenge, and you keep knocking time off, and you're looking at the app, going, okay, I got this. You know, so uh, I made master in that, and I don't know. I get seven or eight percent to go to. For, for grandmaster uh, what what is your favorite steel challenge stage oh well the easy answer is smoke and hope but that's the most frustrating for me too sometimes mm-hmm. <laughs> um but on, honestly i just shot outer limits at area seven steel challenge in yesterday mm-hmm. and that's the one where you actually there's movement so you draw on you you draw you know, onto a, I don't know, 10 inch at 15. And then there's a 35 big plate and you, you know, bolt out of that box to the next box. And you got the same thing on that side in the stop plate. So yesterday I shot it at area seven and did not do well on it. And I did yesterday and uh, it was almost a G, uh, a grandmaster run. Um, and it was cool because I was leaving I was shooting the the smaller plate at 15 first and then going to the, the, you know, those big, the, the, like they use in smoke and hope. Mm-hmm. And I was starting to leave out the box on a 35 yard shot, you know, and that's, that's cool feeling. You know, you got some momentum going, you're kind of leaning out the box and, and 
and hit a 35 yard shot is pretty cool. So, so I, I like that. I like that one. Um, mm-hmm. that's, but it's all fun. And besides pendulum, I can't stand pendulum. I, <laughs> I just, I hate it. I absolutely hate it. Yeah. At your clubs, are are they, do they at least have like all the uh, steel challenge things pre-marked? So then when people go to set up, it's pretty simple. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. All, all the clubs around here are really, we are super fortunate up here because it's, there's really no club that runs a bad match. Mm-hmm. You know, whether it's U, uh, USBSA or steel, it, it's, um, it's pretty cool. It, you know, it, it definitely shows uh, that they're at least uh, serious about Steel Challenge when they have everything already pre-marked. Mm-hmm. They can just set everything up. 20-minute setup, everyone grabs the plates they need, the stands, and they can just set it down and be like, all right, we can do this. Yep. yep. Yeah, and yesterday we shot Outer Limits and uh, what's the other one with the, with the two boxes? You do three showdown. Probably, yeah. maybe. Yeah. Which, which most clubs don't set those up because mm-hmm. of the distance and stuff, and they and they had them both yesterday, so it was cool. That is pretty cool. Yep, that is pretty cool. Now you're shooting pretty much every weekend, um, but what is your training schedule like? Well, I'm starting to really think that right now um, because we've been shooting so many matches. I I think I'm going to take a break from that because it ends up being the whole you know you go to a match you're up at six you're out the door by the time you get home you're smoked because it's been 90 degrees and humid you've been running around all day and it's you know an hour drive there hour drive by the time we get home you just you the week you know and you do you do a saturday sunday so I think I'm going to start being a little more choosy and instead of, um, you know, shooting two matches, because do I ever get to really train? Cause I haven't been able to, I'm so busy with the business. You know, I try, I get my dry fire in daily, mm-hmm. but I never get to the range to, to actually, you know, I'm setting up this drill, this drill, and this drill. That's what I'm doing today. I'm doing these three drills you know, so I haven't been able to do that. And I think it'd be a better use of time to, you know, get to the range at nine, get set up, do what you got to do, be out of there in an hour and an hour and a half and have the rest of the day. To, and, and I've talked about this with some other guys and, and, uh, you know, I think I'll, I'll get more out of it as much as I love to shoot a match, mm-hmm. you know, I don't think I'm getting, you know, you're not, you're not, you can't work on things during a match. Mm-hmm. So I think you using time wisely and, and, and getting some good actual training in um, at this point right now where I'm at uh, will be much better. Well, and honestly, if you think about it too, is like you're spending, we'll say 200 rounds at a local match, you know, just allocate 200 rounds, 400 rounds really when you, with both of you going and yep. you could spend 400 rounds at a practice session and probably get diagnostically a lot, uh, you know, fine tune things a lot more at a mat, uh, at a practice session, I'm sorry, instead of going to a local. Yeah, for, absolutely. So that's the, uh, she really enjoys shooting matches. She's if I could get her to practice, it'd be great of any sort. And I mean, she shoots, and she's, she's made C class and she, you know, <laughs> with no, I'm talking, she does not touch the gun till we show up at the match. <laughs> and she's done that. I'm like, she's got talent. And I'm like, you know, you see me working every day. She's like, I know. I'm like, you know, if you did that, you're, you know, there's a lot of meat on the bone for, for her to, to mm-hmm. go, you know, I'm, I'm searching for this. She has this that she can make up, you know, with five minutes of dry fire a day. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, oh, I just like shooting match. Okay, like, hey, whatever. And it's whatever, you know, I mean, that's the good thing is people getting out and shooting the sport too. I mean, without people shooting the sport, I mean, I mean, who would set, no one would want to set it up anyway. Right. She, she, uh, she's pretty amazing. She, um, she had six women 
at the Steel Challenge, that first time shooters, first time co- of doing any competition, she had rounded six, six women up that were in our squad who had never, and she does it all the time. I don't know how she does. She's like, you know, the more women you get involved, the better. The more women you get. I'm like, yeah, really. So she, she, she it's, it's amazing. I don't know how she does it, but she's pretty involved in, um, she was a, a part of the DC project. I don't know if you ever heard. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so she was, a, um, she's um, on the, the, Goal, more goal, gun owners action league. Uh, it's our Massachusetts, you know, Massachusetts. Um, you know, they're the gun lobby for us, basically. Um, so on the board there, she's the treasurer at our local club. She's so she loves to help. You know, she loves to help us. She's it's awesome. It's pretty cool. Yes, it is. That is absolutely fantastic. Because, like I said, without volunteers like her, we wouldn't have a. You wouldn't be able to run clubs. You wouldn't be able to run matches. It'd be just like, be just yeah. a giant dirt, dirt hole. Yep, exactly. It's a giant dirt hole. Yep. Now, um, do you have any major matches left for the year? Uh, I have Area 8 uh, in two weeks, but I don't know if I'm going, unfortunately. <laughs> uh, unless some things change, I might have to uh, withdraw. Uh, she was going to come and then she decided that she didn't want to spend eight hours in a car. <laughs> so she went through and I was like, all right, yeah. And then I'm not sure if I want to spend eight hours in a car by myself. So unless I can hook up with some, some people, um, I might have to miss it. Yeah. And just, I want to say the major mass mat, going to a major match, the cost is just, it's a lot of money to put out besides the match fee especially if you, you, you could be at home making holsters and right. you're taking off time to, you're taking a day off to drive there and maybe even an extra day to walk stages. Yep. So, yep. Uh, the match, if it's a one day or a two day match, plus the drive home the next day. Yeah. yeah. So you're out five days at least. Yeah. It's pretty well. Yeah. So I was gonna, I, I'm supposed to shoot on Saturday. Mm-hmm. So I was going to leave super early friday get to the range walk stages on friday get up shoot the match on saturday stay sun stay till sunday you know and drive home in the morning on uh, on sunday Sunday. so it's three days you know that's three days of and i'm like "Eh, i don't know i don't know i really want i really want to go but there'll be others and i'm on the wait list for nationals because mm-hmm. i'm a i was a dummy and forgot when sign up was uh, yeah. but if i get if i do get a spot in nationals i will go regardless of any i don't i will i'm going right just for the experience yeah it should be good um i'd, I'd like to see the improvements if from low cap nationals to high cap nationals yeah so we'll did, you, did you shoot low cap? No, I did not. I had enough uh, people on the ground though for me to uh, scope it out. But uh, from what I've heard about, lo- like the restroom facility issues, the uh, oh my god, the bays, the food. I mean, I've got some people going uh, multiple uh, who went to last low cap, and they'll be at high cap for me. So yeah, yeah, same, same, same here. Uh, yeah. It's okay. I'll, I'll, I'll FaceTime Jay from the porta potty. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to. Say that, <laughs> yeah, no, it's, uh, well, I hope they would learn from their mistakes, mm-hmm. you know, and maybe leave the president at home. I don't know. I don't know. I, oh, and, and that's going on now too. Oh, good God. What, what we got less than two weeks until they resume a, conversations on that this will, yeah. what they this will, do decide to decide later they what was it they met up today is for everyone watching or listening later today is august the 15th the board of directors met on august 11th for a three hour plus meeting um and they decided to after coming out of an executive session to postpone the vote for removal so <laughs> I don't know. From my, as far as I'm concerned, it's it's pretty cut and dry. 
the organization needs a change and uh let's go matt hopkins for president well he just won area three so that's that's exciting as well but i agree we need some change um some new life in the board would be nice i have no qualms with my area director he's it's funny we i unfortunately had to pull out of my section match at the end of july but i um due to scheduling issues i was supposed to staff the match but scheduling issue made me drop out so luckily enough i was able to arrive on sunday and uh i took uh photos of some of my buddies so i took stills that's awesome that you posted Mm -hmm. and i ran into the area director as he was leaving early that day unfortunately uh mr rick Steele had uh an issue and he had to uh leave the match early but he was he, we sat there and talked for 10 15 minutes as he was uh, heading out to his car as we were coming in so I mean, it was nice talking to uh, the area director so but yeah, I, I'm oh sorry no go ahead i was able to talk to ours at uh at area seven um too and i have and i have no he's had no problem with him either mm-hmm. uh, so i don't know i just hope they you know they do what they need to do and uh, for for a million reasons you know mm-hmm. so we don't have crazy role changes that just get passed and it, it's it, it, it mirrors our own government way too much agreed. <laughs> well you know I mean? and to be honest if we just followed the bylaws i wouldn't care like we have a system of all right you want to change a rule ask the shooters get their opinion let's not make it effective immediately let's just follow the bylaws and not change the bylaws to suit our needs anyway let's let's see what happens exactly well Mm -hmm. well because now everybody mike myself and probably you moved all our magazine pouches forward added magnets yep which i think magnets should have been anyway because ipsic uses magnets and i understand we're a region of ipsic we're not ipsic but it makes kind of sense i mean if you're sending if you're sending shooters to world shoot mm-hmm. why you know which yeah so yeah i don't think magnets i mean in in the end where your holster your mag carriers are does not make a difference agreed um so i'm okay with that but the whole you know flashlight and appendix deal i mean we know why they did that Mm-hmm. And I and I wouldn't have had I don't have an issue with flashlights, um, but I much would have rather had it been a level one exemption like our law enforcement exemption, you know, or appendix. Well, appendix I could care less if you shoot a major match or something with it. I mean, mm-hmm. but to make the excuse of people can't get a holster for without a light on it for their their gun is kind of absurd. I mean, I mean. Right? It- it's been it's been gone over a million times like mm-hmm. you don't show up you know you don't show up to play baseball or whatever you know you you use the equipment that you're supposed to use mm-hmm. you know that you don't show up and they go oh well you don't have this well you use what you want mm-hmm. right you yeah anyway yeah <laughs> it's a dead horse yeah <laughs> <I agree. laughs> but yeah i mean yeah, I mean, I think good change is coming. Yeah, and that's all we can hope for is that we can get change. But people who bitch about the problems and don't do anything about it, email your area director. Uh-huh. Email the people who are in charge. Don't bitch about it on the internet if you're not if you're not willing to do anything about it. Right. Yeah, definitely email your director. Mm-hmm. Talk to uh-huh. your section coordinator. He can talk to your area director. Yep. Go up the chain of command. Well, I did, you know, and I kind of, I, I. I voiced my opinion in a nice way when I talked to to our area director. Mm-hmm. He just said, "No, I, there's there's no room for that in the you know in the support. It, it, we don't need that. We need to change. So let's yes. hope. Well, fingers crossed." Yes. Now I have I got one listener submitted question, and it, it's going to lead me a down. Um, another avenue of questions but okay. his question is what is the most difficult part about being a holster manufacturer what's the most difficult part wow i'm stumped 
Uh, um. <laughs> Jeez, I, I difficult. I don't know. Difficult's a tough one. Um. Maybe because I've been doing it so long, I don't really find anything. I'm pretty got, got everything dialed. Um, dealing with dealing with customers, dealing <laughs> dealing with customers is probably the most difficult. Especially uh, the impatient ones who send you an email like every uh, couple hours that you haven't yeah, replied to it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. It's, uh, you just, it, it just, sometimes it blows my mind how people don't do any kind of research whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And we'll just place an order and then be like, oh, by the way, in the comments, this is for this with this light and this that you know i'm like well in anywhere did you see where we did that combination of gun and light i mean and we do quite a few right mm -hmm. but they just blindly order pay and put that in thinking it's going to show up on their door and it's like you email quick email going hey do you do this or do that um or a phone call i mean i answer emails within I would say within a half hour because I'm always, you know, I'm constantly checking my phone. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that's other than that, like I was afraid when COVID hit, I didn't know what materials, you know, how, if it was going to affect, you know, any kind of materials or, or that, which it did not at all. That's really good then. Yes. And, uh, but other than that, just, I wear a lot of different hats. That must, that might be the most difficult thing. Like my, if I would love to just be producing holsters, you know, like, but you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I have to keep track of, you know, just everything, just everything that is entailed in the business. I'm, you know, I, I am doing mm -hmm. so. And are you, are you using Kydex or Bolteron or some other thermoplastic? I use Kydex. Oh, okay. Yeah. See? Uh, there is, uh, there is our, our, some Kydex patterns that are uh, Bolteron. So we do, but generally now they're actually, Ky Kydex is making car car carbon fiber. So I've been using that. I just like the, I like the material better. Mm -hmm. um, it, honestly, if you give if you give the average consumer a one made of one and one made of the other, they would not know the difference. Right, it's kind of like tissue and, and uh, Kleenex. Kleenex, yes, yes, right. Q-tips and, and, and or, right, exactly. <laughs> and, 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 and yeah, yeah, yep, for sure. But yeah, I, the only reason I ask, I I work in the plastic industry, so I kind oh, of. Good. Yeah, I uh, I'm a quality insurance uh, quality assurance technician for a the largest color house in the U.S. So, oh, so it's kind of cool. I see a lot of gun parts uh, colors for gun parts uh, come through, which is kind of nice. Yeah, um, yeah. So it's quite interesting, and it's it's rewarding. It's also frustrating at the same time. So, <laughs> yeah, pretty, yeah, I hear you. Every, most jobs are. <laughs> yeah, but in the end of the day, it's it feeds my family and it it keeps the lights on so that's how it rolls as long as you don't get up in the morning and go god i have to go to work you're in good you're in a good place see the lucky thing is i work second shift so i can get up and then not have to go to work till two in the afternoon so <laughs> as long as you get used to that schedule it's good stuff yeah that's good stuff. i've been and i've been here for five years so it's i'm quite used to it hopefully at the end of the year i'm switching to days yeah that evens things out for, for especially when you have family you know Mm -hmm. luckily it's just the, the wife and the, the two dogs so that that's kind of content yeah well so. i'm in the same situation two dogs and, and the girl that's it <laughs> right makes makes life easier that's for sure um but you want to tell us a little bit more about your product line um kind of like what you offer to the, the consumer absolutely. absolutely so we really it's funny being a competitive shooter you would think i i do competitive you know comp comp holsters and i really don't mm -hmm. except for Let's see. Except for, for me, I can always make something, right? Mm -hmm. So, this is my, this is my setup. And look, it's not. 
See, 30 years in the bike industry mm -hmm. and you learn something, right? Yeah. I'm like, oh, look at that. Little, that's a that's a quick release for a, for a seat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that looks almost, it's like a, the knockoff GX, uh, GX holster. 100%. And I, but just so they know, I'm not selling these. Not, right. But uh, I said, oh, I can do that. So I made, yeah. made my, my own. So, I've, so I always run my own holsters for competition, but specialize in, in uh, carry holsters. So um, we have, so three different lines. We have our appendix carry holsters, which are cleverly named the AIWV. Imagine that. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so, you know, just your you know, basic Kydex, your mod wing, uh, you can choice of a, a quick clip like this or a DC um, monoblock, monoblocks, uh, or or soft loops for these. Um, and then we also make an SV2 model, which is uh, basically a one retention screw, um, no wing, still adjustable with adjustable cant. Um, for the clip so so more for your three o'clock to you know your five o'clock carry mm -hmm. um and then we do uh what's called uh, the torch series which is our light bearing holsters which hands down i'll put up against anybody's light bearing in, in the waistband holsters mm -hmm. I, I don't care what company big small um yeah they're 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 pretty amazing um i know jason has a few if you if you ever he's got some good good youtube videos up uh, of some of them too uh, actually yes uh, yes he does i will put a couple links down in the description on youtube and in the the show for those because jason's a buddy he'll eventually be on the show whenever we uh sync up and have time to get him on here which will be fun you know what we'll have to do is i'll have to come out there when you what, what's the bit what do you what's What's your area match? Uh, area five actually will be in Michigan, twenty twenty two. So really, yep. Oh well, I'll be there. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll just have, I'll have to tell Jason he better schedule it now and stuff. Yeah, because <sighs> that man is so busy. To be honest, yeah. too busy. Full time job, the kids, the the training business. Business, yeah. Good for him. I I really like him. He's a he's a good guy. Mm -hmm. But well, good. Yeah, tell me he's gonna have to put me up. <laughs> and I'll, we'll come up. We'll all squat up. We'll, we'll we'll shoot area five. We'll be there. There you go. We could do that. Yep. But yeah. So, um. Yeah. So and then we do. We we. Uh, I'm I'm working with somebody right now. Possibly to do competition holsters. So mm -hmm. dual layered. But they won't look anything like dual layer you see right now okay um i can't get too much, I, it, much into it but if it works out the way it is it'll it'll have definition like like a single layer vacuum formed holster yes that'll be cool but with the thick you know with the rigidity and the, the thickness of a you know a one two five uh, okay but with the look of a, you know, instead of looking like a pouch of something, you know. You mean not, a gun bucket? I'm not, I'm not putting anybody's holsters down, but you know what I mean? But there, there's, there is a way to make them and have them have a, a you know, definition. Really fine, de you're right, with definition. So that'd be cool. Yeah. So if, if we get there, uh, yeah, well, I'll have testers out there for sure. So, mm -hmm. and, uh, What's your most popular gun and light combination? I'm, I'm curious. It was for a while. It was Glock, uh, Glock 19 with the Enforce APLC. Mm -hmm. And now it is a Glock 19 with a TLR 7A. Okay. For sure is the most, um, it was a switch. Uh, people like that compact light that, you know, that is muzzle length. You know where the light isn't coming out so you're not really adding that much material mm -hmm. you know, so if you're you're running a you know 
mid-sized gun like a 320 or uh you know a block 19 you know it's it's a great way to go and and when i think when enforce is supposed to come out with the wild which is their compact new car because they discontinued the aplc um mm -hmm. so the wild will be a, it's a aluminum you know a metal version uh of a, of a compact light i think that'll that'll hit well as uh hit as well also i think there's been a lot of requests and we're working on it right now is um like a glock 48 uh 43 with the tlr 7 sub okay i think that'll be uh pretty popular too so we're working on that one right now and i'm assuming all of your you make your molds in cad and yes and then yeah. vacuum form yep yep yeah we uh for the longest time uh andrew henry of henry holsters mm -hmm. he does all filter stuff he did all our uh all our light bearing holsters. Oh, okay. So, and that's and and that's why I say I put I'll put our light bearing holsters up against anybody's in because that man is the smartest man in Kydex. Mm -hmm. I have uh, I have a Filster spotlight. I, I broke a Filster spotlight through a use of wear. Yeah. And they sent me out. A, um, John kindly uh, request you know sent me another one from Andrew. So that was. Yeah. And it, it was interesting because you could see how the different generations of holster it was comparatively. And it's like, this is yeah. awesome. I, I went away from carrying with the light for a while though, just because it was a, because my carry gun was my competition gun and my competition gun didn't have a light on it. Yeah. So it was always take it out of the holster, take clear them. the, clear the gun, take the light off, put it in a different holster, yeah. make it hot again, put the light back on. Right. Yeah. No, the, you, <laughs> I know you gotta have two, you gotta have two different guns. You gotta have your carry. You gotta have your, your competition i got i got a few i got a few of these yeah well and the cool thing about the the sigs which i wish glock and everyone else would kind of get on bandwagon is the chassis system I, I love a chassis system it's amazing it's amazing i i wish i had my guns aren't in here i actually have god i actually made a limited gun uh i had i had a 40 up uh a full 40 upper full size 320 upper mm -hmm. and when i had them i have a local place who did the milling for the uh to put the romeo max on mm -hmm. legion. i gave them that and they milled it and put my legion plate rear adjustable rear sight on it nice so that with that with a tungsten grip and a magwell and it, it's like i will never fall i probably never shoot it <laughs> <laughs> I shot, I sighted it in and then I went, wow, irons are hard. It's been a while. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I haven't shot irons since I went to the dot. It, yeah. It's been three years for me. I don't, I, mm -hmm. the, the funny, the fun, funniest thing I uh, talking to Mason, I'm like, Hey, what's your advice for, uh, you know, uh, every time, you know, I, when I shoot irons, I, I can come, I come out of the holster. It's right there. First shot. And it just disappears. It's gone. I'm like, mm -hmm. I can't, right. And he's like, why? I go, why, what? He's like, why would you? And I was like, it was not the answer I was expecting from him. Mm -hmm. He's like, dude, why wouldn't you just keep shooting carry optics? It's high cap and it's way more fun. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, Enough said. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And the champ says to stick with carry optic. That's the saying, right? Yeah. Yep. But um, is the Glock 19 in general then your most popular uh, requested uh, holster then? Well, gun. No. Uh, P365 right now. Okay. Uh, or, just the regular or the XL? Either. E yeah. Either the 365 or the uh, the XL. It's Do you only a, make one holster? You just make nope, the 365 nope, XL I, length? Or you no, make? Both? I, I do. I make both. Okay. I thought about doing, but um, you would you would be surprised how. If I had my way, yes, it would be a long. It would be three sixty five XL length plus a little. Mm -hmm. And people don't like I said. People don't know what they don't know. Um, mm -hmm. you, know, you give them a, you give them a three sixty five XL holster for a three sixty five, and then this is wrong. You know, I don't want all that extra. 
even though it'll make the holster carry much more comfortable mm -hmm. um, or the gun carry more comfortable. So unfortunately, sometimes you got to cater to, <laughs> you know, that, and I mean, it, and it's not terrible, you know, to carry the, but ideally it would be, you know, people don't get the, you know, what gun should I get or what, you know, the, the biggest one you can carry comfortably. Mm -hmm. A, a bigger gun carries more comfortable it, it's you know mm -hmm. the more you the more evened out it is you know the you know if you you don't have a lot below your belt and a whole bunch more it's going to want to you know be, it's going to want to camp forward on you if you can even that out it, it, it's a much more that's why people don't understand like i can i can carry a glock 17 with an x x 300 and i'm 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 five five, mm -hmm. and I can comfortably carry that. Yeah, same here. Yeah, yeah. with a Streamlight TLR one, but yeah, yeah, it's, it's, or it's, yeah, or a TLR one, right? So yeah, step. There are definitely about sciences of you know holster wearing and you know holster manufacturing and mm -hmm. so it's yeah, like, John, like I think one of my favorite videos John's done is about like uh, the, the iceberg, the yeah, keel effect with yep, the boat, the yeah, with the boat. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I use I use it all the time with people. I'm like, hey, and they go, oh. Mm -hmm. I think if if you can explain it to them in a way where they can, you know, see and go, oh, that makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Well, and honestly, the cool like even if you're able to show up, like, I think it'd be really cool. If someone like at a concealed carry class, you know, take blue guns, right? With different, you know, like a Glock 26, a Glock 19, and a Glock. 17 even if they make all those or something you know mm -hmm. and just have them in different you know holsters and have be able to show them how it, it prints differently and yep. i'll tell jason to do this yeah i mean this this was one of the biggest the wing the, the mod wings uh, mm -hmm. absolutely i mean if you're if you're still carrying an appendix and don't have that you're just it's and i'd honestly say for me if it doesn't have a wing, it's not a no go. If it, but it has. To, my biggest thing is it needs to be able to take a wedge. Yeah, I, I find more of my issue being the gun trying to like even yeah. with a long gun, it still wants to come out because yeah, you know everyone's got the little the tactical muffin uh, top, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Mine's been <laughs> it's getting a little bigger this year. Oh, yeah, okay. that that's a never ending battle, and it's. <laughs> but yeah, so I mean, and I got to have a wedge. It makes it just a little bit more comfortable for me. Yeah. I. I use the yoga block technique and cut a cut a wedge on for my holsters. Yeah, yeah, no, that's definitely a piece of foam. Um, all our the whole our whole torch series have integrated wedge. Um, I'd have to retool everything to do my full appendix line. Mm -hmm. So, at some point, the return on investment is not there for it, yeah, right? You know, to do thirty plus. It, well, we won't talk numbers but it, it would be it, okay. it would be rough and most people don't you know i would trust me i would love for them to all have it uh mm -hmm. so we'll see it might happen still yeah absolutely now um we're gonna get near the end of the show but i have a couple more questions but um it was one of my favorite questions i steal this from another podcast to uh because I just love how they sounded and made a great um, from the Modern Samurai Project podcast. But um, Eric, what are things that people can either start doing or stop doing to get better? Uh, well, they can stop. Well, let's see. Search out the right advice. Uh, there's a lot, you know what I mean? They there's a lot of stuff on the internet that isn't the right way. And, and I think the only way to learn is to, you know, we've all been through it. Hey, I, I, I when I started shooting, you know, the Costa thing was, was really, you know, the mag total videos were super, you know, where lock your arms, tuck your head and, and you know that was the that was what was in you know and mm -hmm. um just search out good information you know not don't look at one youtube video you find and, and take it as gospel um 
I mean, I, I, I'm sure you're like me and I listen to, I, you know, I like to subscribe, subscribe to the school of the, you know, Ben Steger and all the, you know, in the, in Joel Park and, and mm -hmm. wants it, huh? you know, and, and, you know, that whole, and that's the best information. I, if you're a competitive shooter, you should be on practical training shooting group. Yes, everyone should be, even though I'm not a member yet. I keep, <laughs> neg I keep neglecting every pay period to be like, oh, I really should sign up for this. Oh, yeah. uh, oops, forgot. <laughs> Maybe I'm, next week. I mean, the knowledge on there is, uh, you know, it's, it's endless. It's just endless. So, um, so just, uh, yeah, my best advice, is, you know, seek out the right information um, to get better. Well, seek out the right information and then apply it to, you know, dry fire. I, I like anything, I, I preach dry fire to any gun owner I know and they look at me like I'm crazy. I'm like, you know, you can get better right in your living room every night. Mm -hmm without ever firing around and they like i'm like yeah they, they don't you know a lot of people don't even know it's a thing mm -hmm. um but yeah dry fire dry, dry fire dry fire dry fire it's, a lot of people i've talked to about it who haven't don't dry fire is like won't that break your gun that's like their first question and i'm like no i mean you, no no not for what you, you're gonna do and it's not like you're running around and you're not, it's not like you have a CZ that you're going to break the trigger return spring on because you're dry firing it all the time or, you know, or cracking slides like on a night or a 2011 or something. Well, I mean, you can't crack a slide and dry fire, but yeah, I, mean, I think, I think that's finally going away. That's always been a, you know, don't, don't pull the trigger. Don't, you know, mm -hmm. on, you know, old I, guns are, I mean, there are some guns that it's just not good for, but yeah. most modern striker fire striker pistols fire. that people own, they're yeah. going to be fine. Yeah. So, yeah the right information and then apply the and then apply it in the right in you know in the right manner um i i i've changed my style throughout the years you know and that you gotta <coughs> excuse me then you'd be open to that you know open to doing that when I mean, a lot of people aren't people i know what i'm doing i know what i'm doing um i this year alone i've changed things that you know you would the naked eye you wouldn't notice but you know in grip and in little things like that um and i'm constantly changing that stuff absolutely same here i mean it might not look any different much in the shooting videos but when you change your grip pressures or how you're gripping the pistol or sight confirmations a little bit you know it, exactly. it makes a difference yeah but um do you have any sponsors other than your, your own company <sighs> I like to thank mom and dad. No, uh, yeah, no. American uh, Express. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's see. Yeah, no. Amazon for getting my my stuff here. No, uh, <laughs> it, it's yeah, no. Just, just me. That's it. That's um. I mean, I, I do have a lot of good dealers that that help me out. Um, you know, they'll give me stuff dealer costs, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But I don't. You know, I'm not after. I don't wear a jersey. I don't, you know, <laughs> I'm not opposed to it, but it's not why I shoot. It's not why I, you know, I'm not, trust me, 10% off Rudy projects aren't going to do it. You know, <laughs> it's, mm -hmm. it's, you know what I mean? It's, uh, I did just get my first pair of Hunter HD golds and you liking those. Oh my God. I, <laughs> I, have, I have two pairs. Well, actually, and these are Hunter's lenses that are just clear. No kidding. Mm -hmm. So cool, cool story. I, uh, I'm like, I'm getting a pair. I'm getting a pair. I go to Area Seven, get my swag bag, put it in the car, shoot the match, we drive home. I open it up. I'm like, what did I, what did I get? Pull out, big old envelope, Hunter's HD Gold. <laughs> Pull it out, four hundred dollar gift certificate for Whoa, I was like, yes. I'm like kidding me. Email them. Three days later, classes and I and and I will I will I will buy a pair of rubies too now. Mm -hmm. to have. Um, but yes, anybody I will I will plug them. I will yeah. I've Brian is a and Brian's a cool dude. 
Uh, Brian's he, cool dude. I finally met him in July back at the major match uh, level two. It's called Ryan Rock's Charity Blast. He was there in mm-hmm. person. Um, I met him finally. He's a good dude. Uh, he'll hopefully he's he'll probably listen to this when he's driving on the road somewhere. So we love you, Brian. But he'll eventually be on the show whenever we get a minute. And uh, I, I listen to his pod, a couple of his, his podcasts. It's, I uh, I do like Brian's podcast. I text him probably about once a week about it actually, and be like, man, I wish I. Thanks for letting me know some more information now. It's pretty cool. Yeah, so, Brian, thank you very much. I, I absolutely love them. And I've been preaching to anybody, which it's hard to do because basically everyone is shooting with them right now. Mm-hmm. I'm actually trying. My my stepfather is actually colorblind. So I'm actually trying to convince him to get some rubies Yeah. because I hear they uh, help colorblindness a little bit. He loves he's a he's an archer and uh, like a tax. He, he goes on out west and shoots elk and oh, stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm trying to see if he'll. Uh, if we can get him see if he'll uh, try some rubies out and uh see if that helps his colorblindness for uh targets yeah no i, I bet it will but yeah so uh I, I try to send everybody to brian um they're phenomenal i have two pairs one for mowing the lawn and random things and my <laughs> shooting and then the glasses that sit in the shooting bag now yeah that never get left at home yeah 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 no i love them absolutely love them well eric where we got to plug the social media now where can they okay. find you <laughs> you can find me at, no, yeah so uh for the business it's just 508 holsters you know five on instagram it's 508 underscore holsters uh facebook is 508 holsters um and my my personal is eric olson it's very original eric olson comp- competitive shooter <laughs> i don't know how i came up with that um and that's you know I just put match stuff up on that one and, uh, mm-hmm. you know, in dog, dog pictures in my stories and, and pictures of location. Uh, yeah. That's it. You know, mm-hmm. just life stuff, you know, life stuff. And then, uh, you know, match videos or, 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 or training videos stuff. So. Right. And I mean, that's pretty cool. Um, five weight holsters.com five weight holsters on Instagram and you, uh, Facebook, uh, if you want to see some cool videos about his holsters, check out uh, Jason Hitchings at Adept Defense. Yes. Um, yeah, he's a good buddy, uh, both of us, and he does some pretty good videos on them, so you can't complain. Yeah, no. he, he should have a new one coming out for uh, SIG with TLR7, new mm-hmm. holster. I sent him one a while ago. He said he was going to do a video. He was had one coming out. I don't pressure him. I appreciate everything. Every time he drops a video, it... it uh, it's great for me. So. There you go. Yeah, so. and I, I know. Probably now he'll listen to this and they'll be like, "Oh crap, I need to get that video out." I'll bug him. I mean, next time he, it, it's so funny. He does. It, I always tell him like, "Anything you need, you just ask." Mm-hmm. And it took him a while to ask because all of a sudden I'd be doing, uh, you know, I'd be doing a batch of orders and come across. I'm like, Jason. He would just order. I'm like, Jason. Don't, don't just call me. I'll send you what you need, buddy. <laughs> So good guy. I really appreciate him. Yeah, he's a good buddy. But uh, thanks everyone again for uh, tuning in to another episode of Manny Talk Shooting. I greatly, greatly appreciate you watching. If you enjoyed this content, check out our YouTube channel, Manny Things. And until next time, get out and do the things, guys. <laughs>